Hey, Mr. Inspector, did my boiler pass? Did it? Yes. <laughs> yep, this is called bribery and corruption in Africa. Yeah, my friend. All right, let's get everyone up to date. I'm busy building the Willis Farmers engine, one of the very, very first traction engines used in Britain. And this guy was way ahead of its time. Now I'm busy with a boiler and this specific video is going to be about testing my boiler. Now all of my boilers are stainless steel. I fully design them and fully simulate all of my boilers. I look for sensitization of the wells. I look for sensitivity of the surface to prevent stress corrosion cracking and so forth. I have simulated copper boilers and I've actually made copper boilers myself. And I have found that a number of the published boiler designs, they very, very close to the load limit of copper, which is typically why I don't like making my boilers out of copper. Now, all my stainless steel boilers are assembled and built by myself. I don't allow anyone else to do my welding. I use a TIG welding process. All of my welds are full penetration welds. I do weld tests. I do welding procedures. And right at the end, I put together a boiler pack that actually goes with the model. For the beginner, I just want to make it very, very clear. A stainless steel TIG welded boiler is much, much cheaper than a copper boiler. And I've actually made both. And I can tell you that a copper boiler is more difficult to make. But okay, enough of that. Let's get to how I test these boilers. So this is the pressure test of the Willis Farmers engine boiler. Now it's a stainless steel 316 boiler. So there's a whole lot of issues with stainless steel boilers and I've written tons of articles and I've gotten lots of response in model engineer about all the problems with stainless steel and so forth and the way that I design and pressure test them. So let's just go through some of those issues. First things first, I am pressure testing this on about two bar air pressure first before I do the hydraulic pressure test and typically what I'm looking for is I'm making sure that all the plugs have sealed because such a small boiler if you do a hydraulic pressure test with water if you lose one or two drops at one of these plugs, it's actually like half a bar pressure. So you do want everything to seal properly so that life is a whole lot easier afterwards. Now I have received one or two complaints in model engineer about these boilers and the way that I first pressure test with air and people say, oh, it's very dangerous. Well, look, if you're not prepared to put two bar on any boiler, then you shouldn't be steaming it. Two bar is quite a low pressure and typically that, that's what's in your car tires. This will later be tested to 14 bar. So all I'm doing now is I'm just looking for issues with the, with the plug seals and pinhole leaks on the welding. One of the main reasons for me first testing on air is if there is any welding repair. So if there's a little welding repair that needs to be done on one of the seam welds, then at least the inside of the boiler is not wet. Hydrogen or water in welds is a big, big no-no. You end up with hydrogen embrittlement and all sorts of cracks later on. So if any welding repairs are necessary, it is always good to first pick them up with an air pressure test before you do the hydraulic pressure test. If there is a big problem afterwards with the hydraulic pressure test, you would first need to dry the boiler before you do any welding repairs. Typically on all of my steam domes, I leave a hole at the top, so it's just easier to fill up the boiler. Here we go. Operational health and safety officer is not impressed. <laughs> First thing is just to clear all of the air out of the system. Then we can, 
connect this up. And the last little bit of air in the boiler can be pumped out. So all of my boilers are designed for 100 PSI running and I test it to 200 PSI which is about 14 bars but I only set my boilers and trains to run between 80 and 90 PSI so I always have it slightly higher. Now as long as there's no air in this boiler a couple of pumps with this little pump will get to 14 bar very quickly so let's have a look and you can see there's no So it's been half an hour and I started at about 14 and a half bar it's gone just below 14 bar and typically one or two little drops like that is where the problem is now I'm not going to do anything about that because it's a flange but if you have a look at all the other welds they're all nice and dry and all the fittings are sealing nicely so there's no leaks on any of the welds so this is all looking good so for the next half an hour what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump that up to above 14 and a half and I'm going to let it sit for another half an hour so it's been an hour and it's just just below 14 bar so we still have those little leaks on that head there but all the welds look fantastic so there's no concern there some of the fittings have a little drop on but that's not a biggie and I see that this back fitting is leaking a little bit but structurally this boiler is fantastic and it's ready to go to the next stage now if you in a club and you do a pressure test like this and after an hour you get a few leaks and it drops by say a bar or half a bar and the boiler inspector says this is not acceptable you need to redo it that's not fair and in fact it's actually quite nonsense because what you're doing here is you're doing a structural hydraulic test you're not doing a leak test if your boiler leaks when you go around the track or you know when you're using your steam little engine that's your problem what you do need to make absolutely sure of is that your boiler is structurally sound and this is what the test does small little leaks on the fittings and on the little flanges is not a reason to stop a test so this boiler is ready to become something amazing.